Tyler here with GP Knives and we're back again for update 154 of 2021. We're going to start out this week a little differently. A few of you have been asking to see my EDC, so we're going to start out with that. I have my Benchmade bug out here. It has become one of my favorite everyday carry folders. Nice, light, and slim with plenty of cutting edge. S30V is a very serviceable steel for daily carry with a nice balance of performance. Good edge retention and corrosion resistance, and pretty good sharpening response from my experience. We've got a gray PVD coating on here, dual thumb studs, axis lock, nice smooth operation. And this one has customized scales from custom blade scales in OD green micarta with a nice ANSO pattern milling. You can see it's darkened up nicely on the high spots and is still a little bit lighter in the milled areas. Otherwise, you're looking at the same construction. We've got a longer deep carry clip on here as a replacement. And generally, just a great all-around EDC that really gets the job done. And another knife you will find with me, I would say almost any day of the year, is the classic Spyderco Urban. This is another great lightweight design. Very comfortable and secure for a non-locking folder. You got that index finger choil there, so you're essentially holding the blade. Very minimal risk of closing this knife on you. Fully flat ground in 690 CO. Again, just a general all around steel with good corrosion resistance. Edge retention is not going to be quite as good as S30, but still pretty good and it is relatively easy to sharpen. Black FRN. Simple, rugged, and impervious to the elements. Normally this comes with a deep carry wire clip, which I am a fan of, but I carry this in my fifth pocket, so I've removed that and added a lanyard. And on newer models of this, you're gonna find that the blade half stop sits at 90 degrees. This is an older model where they had a machining issue, but still provides that added safety of the half stop. I do have one more knife here. This is a Victorinox Classic SD. I don't use this one too often, and mostly it is for the scissors for trimming thread or cutting paper, but it is a nice backup to have. Got it attached with a Night Eyes S beaner here. This is a locking version. They've got a newer updated version that has a slide lock, and so you can unlock these sides independently. And then I have a Prometheus Design QR Quick Release in brass. They make these in a few different materials. And it's a great way to be able to easily separate items such as different sets of keys or keys from a fob. Normally I do have my set of keys on one side. So it's a handy way to separate things. I've got a little wire here attaching my EDC light, the Rovivon Aurora A8. Just a simple, lightweight keychain light. Plenty of brightness for the output. Mostly I use it on the low. And then it does have some secondary features. We've got a UV and a red. And then a neutral white reading light. So you find those generally attached to my keys. A couple of other things. Got the Shire Post Mint burnt supreme pizza just a nice edc coin made from solid copper with a blackened finish you can see this one's starting to wear through that blackened finish and eventually you're going to be able to see a lot more copper through that a nice weight and great dual texture on there smooth on the back and nice textured on the topping side makes a great worry coin and just a fun little edc piece and last but not least, this is an essential around the shop and at home. We've got a Chris Reeve Knives microfiber cloth, and we use these all around the shop to clean blades as well as lenses, both for equipment and for glasses. So that's my EDC, and now we'll jump right in to update 154.
First up, we'll start out with restock on the highly in-demand Paramilitary 2 in Maximet. Maximet is a high hardness, high wear resistant tool steel made by Carpenter and was originally developed for their rollers in their steel rolling mills. This is going to deliver an exceptionally high level of edge retention and good stability at the edge. It does require a bit more effort in sharpening. So maintaining the edge on this is highly recommended to prevent the blade from getting very dull. Otherwise, you're looking at a standard PM2 full height flat grind. The Maximet has a tumbled finish. We've got dark gray G10 for the scales in an open back construction with inset stainless steel liners, the compression lock mechanism, four position clip, and generous lanyard hole. So we do have a fair amount of restock on these, so get them while they last. Next up, we'll take a look at the new paradigm shift from Buck. We've got a blade of Paul Boss heat treated S35VN for good balance performance. Nice spear point profile with a mid height hollow grind for good slicing performance. Black Cerakote coated bolsters with black G10 on this variant. We've got a gold backspacer and pivot hardware. And then a reversible end mounted stainless steel deep carry clip. And as you already saw, this is a bolster lock and bolster actuated auto. Nice snappy deployment, good size, and very ergonomic and comfortable in the hand. And they actually make two Paradigm models. We've got the Paradigm Shift and then the Paradigm Assisted Flipper. And this is the other colorway. Both the flipper and auto come in both colorways. And they both have the S35VN blade. We've got a brown Cerakote on the bolster here with Tangi 10. You've got a kind of matte gray for the backspacer and all black hardware on this one. Same reversible deep carry clip for the flipper. You need to slide the bolster lock up and then back down. It actually provides a safety as well, so it can't be deployed unless the bolster is up. And then the bolster will actually stay up, but you can kind of press it down in the same movement that you use to deploy the blade. So a couple of great options there and a nice high performance design from Buck. And another classic design with a new take. This is the Kershaw Leak. And this is just the standard modified Warncliffe blade with blasted steel handle. 14C28N for the blade. Nice high quality Sandvik steel. And then this is the same handle design with the reverse Tonto, also known as the Random Leak. So you can see the blade profile is a fair amount different here. You got a bit more belly on the Random Leak. The reverse Tonto point is going to give you a bit more durability at the tip while still being a highly versatile, slim gentleman's EDC. So nice classic design. We have the random leak in both the standard gray here and a full black wash finish on blade and handle. And another classic gentleman's option is the Makusta. And we've got a few different variants of the Makusta restocked now with the laminate SPG2 powder steel. And SPG2 is going to deliver a similar performance to S30V. So a nice well-rounded steel. The stainless steel laminate in Sanmai here gives you that hamon line on the blade for a nice striking look and gives the added durability and corrosion resistance of the stainless steel cladding around the high hardness powder steel core. This one's got stainless steel bolsters that are brushed and Packowood laminate handles. 
solid steel liners and backspacer. And you can see it's a liner lock. You've got a spine mounted clip for ambidextrous carry. Fairly low profile as well. And then you've got the oiled washer system that Makusta uses for a nice smooth operation. So great option for a dress carry or gentleman's carry when you still want a high performance blade there. And then we'll jump back over to Buck and their new Budgie, a nice EDC folder. Uh, Budgie is another name for a parakeet. And these little birds are nice and robust while still being compact. We've got a blade of Again, Paul Boss heat-treated S35VN and a classic drop point profile. Mid-height hollow grind, so you get a nice balance of durability and cutting performance. This is a stainless steel frame lock, and despite the steel lock face side, the compact knife is pretty lightweight for carry. We got a G10 front scale here, USMC red on the backspacer, and then a nice clip here on the side for right hand tip up carry. And then of course the clip can be removed if you want to carry this with just a lanyard. Black G10 on this one. And then we've also got a Jade or Natural G10 with all black hardware, including the lanyard loop and the pocket clip. So same blade. Just a different colorway there. And lastly, we have some featured accessories from Martac. We've got the XL Brass Peanut Lighter. We've got a nice smooth machine brass here with an insert lighter. And this can also be removed and the capsule can be used as a cache that is watertight thanks to the O-ring design there. We've also got the titanium sewing kit. So this is a piece of machined titanium that is cut with some emergency sewing supplies. You've got buttons, hook needles, and standard needles in a couple different sizes. It's got a high density foam backing. So this just slides right into your wallet and essentially disappears in there until it is required. And then we have a folding titanium utility scalpel. And this is a large version. You can see it's got a dimpled titanium handle with titanium backspacer and lanyard loop. You've got a titanium pocket clip for right hand tip up carry. And then it also comes with a nylon pouch with a lanyard cord. So a couple different options for carry there. Also comes with multiple replacement blades. So you can just use these thin stainless steel blades until they're dull and then swap them right out for a new one for that scalpel like performance. It's not a locking knife, but it does have a fairly strong slip joint mechanism there. So nice safe use option there. And it is exceptionally lightweight and has a low magnetic response as well. Again, this is Tyler with GP Knives and your update 154. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay sharp. If you like what you've seen today and you'd like to see more, follow us on social media via the links in the description. Subscribe to our channel and like the video below and follow us for updates on all new products and releases.